All right, guys, Boy 32 here, check it out. So what are we looking at? Well, a box, it's a brown box. And it's not that long, by that long, and I bet by now you're gonna be guessing that by the title, this is a Bear Creek Arsenal, just a standard AR-15. They had called and asked if I'd be willing to take a look at one of their rifle sets, and I said, uh, absolutely. I'm an ambassador to the sport. I want to look at everybody's stuff, and you guys at the end of the day uh, will benefit because hopefully I can give you a good pros and cons of every one of the video or whatever reviews that I do. So in any case, I asked them, uh, send me the basic M4 configuration, uh, hand guards, butt stock, that kind of thing. Nothing special. I just want the basic. This guy right here retails for $358, and this is a complete rifle. So let's get in to seeing... Uh, what's in the box. Guys, when I say that this thing comes basically about as standard as it gets when it comes to boxes. So you do get a box. And it's kind of a cool box, actually. Uh, well, anyway, comes just like this. Yeah, plain Jane. Let's take it on out and do a full box opening and review. Now, this is part one of a two-part series because I am really and, and truly interested to seeing what this thing can do out in the field, not only just from a reliability standpoint, but from an accuracy standpoint. I mean, let's think about it. What are important to you when you are looking at buying an AR-15? Well, to me, I recognize that accuracy is probably one of the most important things. Secondly, uh, reliability. So those two together, I, I guess you weigh them out equally. Probably more so on a rifle like this, you want to have um, reliability over accuracy. Because you're not looking at shooting one inch groups with this guy, no. What you're looking at is a good, sensible, reliable AR-15 that will not fail on you. Now, let's just be honest. A $358 AR-15, you're not going to be out there doing contracting work, and you're probably not going to be out there defending the country. But I believe it's everybody's obligation in our country to own an AR-15, and this would give you the ability. Now, this guy right here, manufactured right here in North Carolina, Sanford. I know a lot of guys uh, from Fort Bragg who live out there in Sanford. So, in any case, let's take a look at this thing from the rear to the front and what we're going to do in this video is just go over the really cool aspects of it and then we're going to take it out and shoot it and see how reliable it is how accurate it is we're going to run some 55 grain through it i am probably going to put a a really decent scope on this thing for the accuracy testing but then for the rela reliability aspect i'm going to well i'm going to bring out some of the old stuff so we're going to put this guy right here on it. This is an old uh, primary arms aim point kind of a deal. And then we're going to take this UTG uh, backup iron sight and put on it because I think that kind of looks cool, doesn't it? Move that forward a little bit. This thing did have the nice rubber uh, coat uh, protector on it. I took it off, but look at that. That's a good looking rifle. And the coat, and this is damn near, per it is perfect. All right, so let's take this guy's back off and let's get back to it. All right, so what do we have here? This is a simple M4, you wanna say mil spec. Everybody, everybody wants to say mil spec, but to be perfectly honest with you, uh, what is mil spec? Mil spec is a minimum standard that a company must meet in order to be accepted by our government, the military. You probably got everything that's in the upper and a lower receiver. Uh, the barrel, the barrel's interesting on this guy because this is a one and nine twist. I've never had a, a barrel with a one and nine twist on it. So I'm interested to in seeing how accurate this thing is with the uh, the 55 grain. This is a 223 wild barrel on the M4. That's kind of cool. All right, so look at this. Here's our uh, butt stock right here. It does have a six position buffer tube. There's a QD mount right there, QD attachment point. I'll go ahead and pull this off and look at the channels. Now these are the things that I look at when, I, when I'm looking at an AR-15, I'm looking at certain items. One is to make sure this channel area right here is centered. Now I've got a couple of these in the past, not by Bear Creek Arsenal, but just some other miscellaneous manufacturers where they were not centered up and I had to send it back. Now, this is not nitride, it's not parkerized. I'm, I'm not sure what that finish is, but it's black. Looking around the castle nut right there. Uh, I don't know that it's actually staked. Ford assist is okay. 
Moving forward, let's go ahead and open it, it up, separate the upper and lower receivers, and we can see what's on the inside. Come on now, work with daddy. So we got a, just a mil spec charging handle. Now each one of these rifles comes with the Bear Creek Arsenal um, warranty, which is pretty cool. Uh, from what I understand, if there's an issue with it, you gotta you can do is send it back to them, they'll replace it, no issue. Let me know, guys know what uh, your experiences have been with these people, if you know of any. Ford Assist works good, standard upper receiver. Uh, it's got a, oh my gosh, there's a square on it. I can't remember who uh, forged these things. Uh, it's not marked on the top. Picatinny rails look good in good shape. There we go. Let's go here. Let's take a look at the BCG. I'm gonna bring in the camera in just a little bit so we can go ahead and tear this thing apart. Bolt carrier, just charging handle. Charging handles, charging handle. Here we go, stand by. Okay, so here we are. We've got a bolt carrier group. Now this guy right here, the uh, the BCG itself is 9310 steel. The bolt is parkerized and the carrier is a black nitride finish. Now as you can see, the tooling looks pretty good right here. Just bearing points, I say bearing points. The bearing points on the interior are here, 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 and here. Now those surfaces, uh, and you know, this is an economical bolt carrier route, probably not the absolute greatest, but for a complete, you know, let's just put it in uh, relative measures. On a competition rifle, I'm gonna spend $200, $250 just on the bolt carrier itself. So you do get what you pay for, but if it functions and functions nicely and without malfunctioning, then you're, you're in, in like Flynn. So what you wanna look at is the overall milling it all looks good. Uh, you've got the uh, gas key right here. These things are staked. Those are tool hardened uh, fasteners right there. Let's go ahead and pull this thing out. Guy out. There's a car key. Looks good. There's our firing pin. Looks good. It's got some lubricant on it. Let's go ahead and rotate the cam pan out of there and the bolt. Now, here's the thing, being that this is a economical style AR, one of the things that we always wanna do is does this guy come with the, the donut ring that's in here? And I believe Travis P11, his did not. Okay, well, it does, check that out. What does that do? It adds to the reliability of the firearm all the way around. Now you can tell, look at the, uh, the brass on the uh, face of the bolt, you can tell that this thing has been test fired. They do test fire every firearm before it leaves the uh, facility, their manufacturing facility. Now these guys got in a, <laughs> they were in the news a little while ago for, uh, I guess some illegal aliens had uh, falsified some records. And, and you know what, that's part of the problem we have in this country is these guys know the game better than the feds do. And uh, well, they were able to falsify some documents and the problem is, is when illegal aliens do that and they come in, they drive the cost of labor down, well, then you have a problem. All right, so the bolt carrier group, uh, it, it does receive a seal of approval. Let's go ahead and put that thing back together again. Here we go. All right, awesome. A lot of times you have issues with that pin being spread at the end of it and going back in there. Moves nicely. The uh, gas rings were in proper location. Uh, just always take a look at those things. Not a bad little deal, looks good. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to look at the ejection spring. Okay. That looks good. All right. Very nicely done. Let's go ahead and take a look at the lower receiver. All right. So the lower receiver, one of the things we want to look at is cleanliness in here is not adjustable. As you can see, um, the buffer and the buffer spring. Now again, this is your economical stuff. Let's see here. Come on out now. There we go. Spring looks good. It looks like a coated spring. Buffer looks halfway decent. Springs are moving around. Buffer tube, one of the things that I look at, that thing is, it is a mirror polish inside of there. Very nicely done. It's one of the things, that is my pet peeve. When you start talking about lower parts kits, a lot of these guys, one of the things that they do, and I'm not sure these guys do it, but a lot of the manufacturers, they outsource all of their lower parts kits. So it's just more economical. I don't know if these guys do that or not, but one of the things that I do want to look at, SafeWorks, Go ahead, that's nice there. Let's see how smooth that trigger is. Here we go. Not bad. 
if you're going to buy something like this, I anticipate you'll probably go ahead and do a polishing job on the trigger. Mag release looks good. There you go. Bear Creek Arsenal BCA 15 multi caliber. Comes with an A2 grip. Trigger guard right there. Now, I want to show you guys something. The cool thing, if you don't know this, these things are designed so that you can bring them down like that and you can shoot with a big old fat glove in. A lot of people uh, who have not been in the military are not familiar with that. Just thought that I'd throw that out there. That looks good. I like the butt stock. There you go. I do like the in integration of that uh, QD mount right there. If I had a sling, I'd go ahead and test that out. Let's take a look at the upper. Here we go. From the rear to the front, everything looks good right here. Brass deflector. You got the pick rail up here. Delta ring. Let's go ahead and pull this apart. That came across. That came, <laughs> that came apart really nice and easy. We've got the aluminum shields in there. There's a single shield in these uppers, or what do you call these things, the upper and lower, they are keyed here, 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 so that you can put those in. There's not going to be slipping apart. Nice uh, delta ring. Very, very nice and clean application there. Front sight post, F mark, because it is a flat rail. Not bad. You do have the bayonet lug. I need to get myself a bayonet. I'm not sure what that means, BCA, or who made that. But anyway, good finish. The... Uh, it is marked up on the uh, front sight post, not bad. The muzzle brake is nothing but more than a uh, A2 style bird cage, which I think is probably one of the best designs ever. Okay, so here's one of the coolest things. Now we do have the endo snake, and this is adding to some really cool stuff for our upcoming review. Let's go ahead and feed this on in here, and let's check out that bore and see what it looks like. Now, like I said, they have fired, test fired this thing once. There's the bore. Landings and grooves look good. I would have never thought, and there it is. Boom. Let's go ahead and bring it back out. Our gas port coming up on us. Rotate it. All right, so I'm looking for the gas port. There it is. Right there, you can see it. Nope, there's a the gas port. Boom. And as you can see, one of the things, if I can get up on it, right there, that's the gas port. We'll go ahead and bring it back out. All right, so there you go. One and nine twist barrel, very nice. That's about it. I like the uh, the way they constructed it. You can still see the grease right there. Not a bad deal, I don't mind that at all. But it is, should be interesting to see how this thing shoots when we get it out to the field. All right, let's go ahead and put this bad boy back together again. I always try to put the front or the top in first. And if you thought that was easy for me to take out, it was. A lot of times these things are almost next to impossible to remove. Get in there. Oh, cocksucker. There we go. Boom. Very nice fit. Very tight on that end of it. Uh, let's go ahead and put our bolt carrier and our charging handle back in. like it. You've got swivel studs right here on the front for your sling and the back. Overall, guys, I, I'm impressed. Uh, craftsmanship, workmanship is standardized. I mean, I don't... All right, well, my battery just died there, but I'll tell you what. As far as the rifle is concerned itself, Bear Creek Arsenal, you guys put together a pretty decent rifle. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take it out to the range, which, by the way, we miraculously ended up out at. <laughs> and I'll tell you what. Uh, this thing is, is, is a nice little AR. Uh, for the money, you did pretty good. 358 bucks. Nicely done. 
Uh, like I said, the only downfalls I see in the craftsmanship itself was the uh, whatever the finish is on the buffer tube and on the uh, muzzle brake here. And that's me being picky. Uh, looks like a pretty decent little rifle. Did it do well at the range? Well, I'll tell you what, you guys are going to have to sit here and find out. Stand by.